Many people wake up in the morning, they drink caffeine within 10, 20, 30, sometimes within two minutes of waking, and they feel more alert, naturally. But then what they find is that in the early afternoon, in particular after lunch, they experience a dramatic dip in their overall levels of energy, the so-called afternoon crash. And in most cases, the way they respond to that is to ingest more caffeine, which indeed can increase their levels of mood and alertness. However, there is a problem with ingesting caffeine in the afternoon if it falls within eight or 10 or dare I even say 12 hours of going to sleep. And that is the caffeine ingested in the afternoon for most everybody, 95 plus percent of people disrupts the architecture and quality of their nighttime sleep. And I should say that it doesn't necessarily impact their ability to fall asleep and maybe even sleep through the night, but that the depth and quality of that sleep is disrupted by consuming caffeine in the afternoon. But there's a huge advantage to restricting your caffeine intake to the early part of your day, but not consuming caffeine within the first 90 to 120 minutes after waking. In fact, many people find that if they delay their caffeine intake to 90 to 120 minutes after waking up, that they feel more alert in the morning and they completely avoid that afternoon crash. Now that said, many people, including myself, do need a short nap or non-sleep deep rest or other form of relaxation for 10 to 30 minutes in the afternoon. That is natural and healthy. I'm not referring to the need for that when I refer to the so-called afternoon crash. What I'm talking about in the afternoon crash is a inability to recover energy and focus and a need to consume more caffeine just to make it through the afternoon. By delaying caffeine intake, there are a couple of things that are accomplished. First of all, you offset that afternoon crash, and this is an effect that many people experience the very first time they start delaying their caffeine intake. And the reason this works so well is the following. As I mentioned earlier, adenosine is a molecule that builds up the longer that we are awake. It is a molecule that is reduced or cleared from our system by sleep. So when we emerge from sleep, regardless of how long we've slept, our adenosine levels are lower than they were when we went to sleep the previous night. If you slept well enough and long enough, those adenosine levels can be very, very low, but they are never completely zero. When you wake up in the morning, even if you're one of these people that springs out of bed and is ready to attack the day, regardless, there's still some residual adenosine in your system. And this is particularly the case if you did not get enough sleep or enough depth of sleep the night before, the correct ratios of slow wave sleep and rapid eye movement sleep. You wake up in the morning and your adenosine levels are low, but they're not zero. And if you didn't sleep that well or deeply enough the night before, you're going to have more adenosine in your system. You might think the logical thing to do is therefore to drink caffeine and to block the adenosine that's there. But what happens if you do that is there's an accumulation, a sort of glut of adenosine that hangs around. And then in the afternoon, when the effects of that caffeine start to wear off, you will experience the so-called afternoon crash. As I mentioned earlier, there is a way to clear out the adenosine that's present when you wake up in the morning and to clear it out essentially completely without just blocking its receptors and letting it accumulate or hang around. And the way to do that is to deliberately spike your cortisol. Now, many of you have heard of cortisol, the so-called stress hormone, as a bad thing. And indeed, chronically elevated cortisol is a bad thing. It depletes your immune system. It's bad for psychosocial effects. It tends to make us feel anxious and on and on. But cortisol itself is not bad. Cortisol is wonderful. Cortisol enhances the efficiency of the immune system. It makes us alert and focused. It stimulates our metabolism. It does a huge number of positive things, provided that it is released in a circadian fashion, that is at the appropriate times every 24 hours, and that it tends to peak very close to waking. In fact, one of the reasons you wake up in the morning, assuming that you weren't woken up by some noise or sleeping in an environment that's too warm, etc., is that your cortisol levels start to rise. And shortly after waking, your cortisol levels will start to reach their peak. And when I refer to a cortisol pulse, that's just I mean, biology nerd speak for a rise and peak in cortisol. You want that cortisol pulse to occur early in the day close to waking. And you want that for a couple of reasons. First of all, if you don't restrict that cortisol pulse to early in the day, it will tend to bleed into the later parts of the day. And actually a late shifted cortisol peak is one of the hallmark signatures of depression, low level depression and serious depression. And it can start to disrupt sleep and certainly can disrupt mood metabolism and your immune system. So you want that cortisol peak early in the day. How do you ensure that that happens? Well, you wake up in the morning and whether or not you're a bounce out of bed type or you're a more groggy, you know, kind of wade slowly into the day type like I am, you wake up and you don't ingest caffeine. Fine and in fact, 
beneficial to hydrate with water and electrolytes. Terrific, in fact, I would say necessary to get bright light in your eyes, ideally from sunlight. I've talked about this many, many times before on the podcast. If you wake up before the sun comes out, then turn on bright artificial lights. But then certainly once the sun is out and even on cloudy days, in fact, especially on cloudy days, get outside for anywhere from five to 20, maybe even 30 minutes. Do some work outside, take your breakfast outside. If you're a breakfast eater, get something done outside, even if it's just to get outside and get bright light in your eyes. Why? Well, because it's been shown in studies on humans that getting bright light in your eyes in the first hour after waking or as soon as possible after waking increases the peak of that cortisol pulse by 50%, five zero. And that cortisol pulse, yes, increases mood, yes, increases alertness, but it does one other very important thing, which is that, that through an indirect pathway, it can clear out any residual adenosine that might be present in your system when you wake up in the morning. Again, this is going to be especially important for those of you that are not getting as much sleep or as much quality sleep as you would like. It's going to be very important for you to get that morning bright light, ideally from sunlight, get that cortisol peak going. Other ways to increase that cortisol peak would be to do some physical activity. If you don't have time to do a full workout, well then getting some movement, you know, 10 minutes of skipping rope or even five minutes of skipping rope or jumping jacks or walking if that's all you have time for, ideally while getting the sunlight in your eyes. But that's going to zero out the adenosine present in your system. If, however, you were to wake up and immediately drink caffeine, caffeine itself can stimulate the release of cortisol a little bit more than it would otherwise be present in your system. But by blocking those adenosine receptors and because of the indirect effects of caffeine on the cortisol system, you actually are reducing the clearance of adenosine that would otherwise occur. I realize that's a mouthful. Just to be very clear, if you wake up and you ingest caffeine right away, you're blocking the adenosine receptor, but you're not clearing it out. You're also preventing cortisol from having its normal increase and rise such that it can directly clear out adenosine because cortisol can clear out adenosine. And that's what you want. You want to be at maximum alertness and focus in your morning and throughout your day. And by delaying your caffeine to 90 to 120 minutes after waking, you set up your system so that you get that morning cortisol peak, ideally a peak that's even greater because you're getting your bright light viewing. And then when you ingest your caffeine 90 to 120 minutes after waking, not only will you be craving it just a little bit, but you will be drinking that caffeine on an already existing backdrop of increased alertness for two reasons. One is adenosine is zeroed out and your cortisol peak is higher. And so now when you ingest caffeine, you can actually ingest levels of caffeine that are a little more reasonable, that almost with certainty are going to fall in this one to three milligrams per kilogram dosage and will allow you to feel really alert and will carry that alertness well into the afternoon hours without the need to drink more caffeine and thereby will prevent you from drinking caffeine and disrupting your nighttime sleep. And of course, by getting better nighttime sleep, you're going to zero out your adenosine even more. So what I'm describing here are essentially two tools. I'm telling you to get morning sunlight and maybe some exercise in conjunction with that, even if it's brief exercise. But the main tool of delaying caffeine 90 to 120 minutes after waking has immediate effects, but it also sets in motion a cascade or domino falls that lead to better sleep and more wakefulness the next night and the next day and so on and so forth.